I'm Bella Gidda-Travis from South Anchorage High School. Today I'm here with Ariane Aaron Bureau with Alaska's News Source. Today I'll be talking with her as a part of ASD Shine Bright podcast. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so um, today, in recognition of Women's History Month, we're going to be asking some questions in light of that. So we're going to start off by saying, who or what initially sparked your interest um, in journalism? Huh, that probably came later on um, in my teenage years. Growing up, I wanted to either be a pediatrician, a marine biologist, or I wanted to be a choreographer because I love dance. But really, it was after I started to compete into pageants. Um, I earned a scholarship for my first year at UAA. And so I was always outgoing. I love to dance and be in front of people. So I figured maybe PR, public relations, would be a good field to enter into. So I declared my major as mass communication. Um, from there, I started to kind of realize more and more like what journalists do. And at that time, um, I interned at then Channel 2. So I was working with Maria Downey and Megan Baldino and kind of learned the ins and outs of the newsroom. And I was like, oh, I think this is kind of cool. You're out meeting people on stories. So I declared my major as mass communication uh, with a concentration in broadcast journalism. And I interned at Channel 2. And then from there, it was just a matter of getting your foot in the door for your very first TV station, because it's one thing to major in that and to do mock newscasts in college and an internship, it's a whole nother thing to actually get a job in a working newsroom. So that was a little bit of a, a struggle. Um, once I graduated college, I didn't immediately go into a news station. I worked in media sales uh, in Kansas City. So, but I still always wanted to see if I could make it uh, in TV. So one thing led to another where I got an opportunity to go cover like pumpkin festivals and popcorn festivals in St. Joe, Missouri. Missouri. Um, when I was living in Kansas City, it was about 50 minutes north and um, I would drive up there on the weekends and, you know, kind of get my experience, so to speak. And one thing led to another of getting a job opening. And so that was my foot in the door um, to come on as a reporter and do the morning news. And then from there, I got to my next station and then, you know, ended up here. So That's it came full wonderful. circle. Yeah. <laughs> um, what challenges did you face as a woman breaking into the journalism field? Hmm. For me personally, um, I would just say the challenge was just kind of trying to show your worth and that, you know, you were on the grind and kind of had to compete with the best of them. I mean, when you're in getting into this field, you're up against journalists who have been there for years on years, depending on which station you're at. So for me, it's kind of like a thing we're always kind of having to prove yourself. Um, definitely being open to constructive feedback. You know, a lot of people come in and you're on TV, so you it's kind of like fake it till you make it. So, you know, for me, I didn't experience too much uh, as far as, you know, being a woman, I would say a woman of color. That was something that I would normally was the minority in most of the newsrooms that I worked, but that's changed now. I mean, I've been in the industry 16 years, but I would say when I first started off, it was usually just kind of me, the female, and I worked with a lot of male counterparts. So you didn't see too, too many women and young women of color when I was starting out, but now I would say it's, it's a mix and, you know, newsrooms now are diversified, but personally for me that would probably be the one thing that I saw uh, in my career. You've used your platform to talk about your journey with postpartum depression which has resulted in you becoming a resource for a lot of women who face the same thing. What pushed you to share your story? Well, um, what pushed me to share my story was the fact that I was on maternity leave and a lot of people had known me as the morning news lady, waking people up in the morning time. For the most part, I am a happy, outgoing person. Um, had no complications with my pregnancy until after I had her. I struggled with breastfeeding. And then those feelings of postpartum depression had set on. Um, I thought it was the baby blues, but I realized the three months that I was off of work that I was like not the only mom out there. And at my age going through this, I was going to these like mommy and me classes at the hospital and just literally seeing other women with their newborns kind of looking around like, what just happened and yeah. being in the field that I'm in of journalism we share and tell people stories I came back and I immediately was like we got to talk about postpartum depression I was a huge advocate of uh, mental health this just thrusted to be more of an advocate for perinatal support which is you know the postpartum health for moms and uh, my news director was like well why don't you start by sharing your story and normally we're the ones sharing other people's stories so having the camera turned on me, I was like, oh, but I knew that to make an impact, 
by me being vulnerable to my viewers and to women and men all over of sharing my story of like, hey, pretty much I had my daughter and got sad, but I got help and here's what I did. So that thrusted into um, an hour long uh, news special. And to this day, I still have people coming up to me saying, thank you for sharing your story. Um, and we have resources that are available. So I'm a huge advocate for it and I'm glad that I did do it. It was a pretty cool experience. Wonderful. Yeah, thank you. How do you find balance between being a successful career woman and a wonderful mom? Oh, well, thank you. Um, you know, I would say, honestly, it's my schedule. I work the morning news schedule. I've been on it since I've been here, going on almost 10 years. Uh, I work 3 a.m. to 1 p.m. Now I work four days of the week. I work Tuesday through Friday, but I would say it's, it's the schedule. It's the morning. I mean, the hardest part of my job is literally once the alarm goes off and waking up out of bed. Once you get over that hump and you get into work, it's like, okay, it's smooth sailing. But the fact of this schedule, I'm able to take a break, go home, get my daughter off and ready to school. So she sees me in the morning. Um, and then I have time, you know, once I'm off work for myself, if I want to work out or t run errands or do things for me, I still have a couple hours before she's out of school. And then when she's out of school, guess who's able to go pick her up? Me. So for, you know, the balance of it, I would say it's, it's the schedule and the flexibility because I get to see my daughter. Uh, she knows what I do. She gets to come to work when she kind of has off days at school and hangs out. Everybody knows her and, you know, just showing her that example of, mommy can work and have a full-time career but also can be home and you know be mommy and on the weekends we go do fun stuff or travel and it's great too that I have family here my mom and dad live in Eagle River um, I grew up in Eagle River went to Chugiak so on the weekends we go do family stuff she gets to be around her cousins so it's you know it takes a village but and I'm grateful to have the support but I would probably say you know, surprisingly, it is my schedule that helps me be able to balance um, time for a career and also mom and also self-care as well. That's so important to mm -hmm. prioritize yourself as well. Oh, yeah. I've checked in and I see you have a podcast <laughs> uh, relatively new called Parenting in the Far North. How did that come about? Well, it came about because as with everything, technology is driving a lot of things, you know, long gone are the days of just a strict newscast. So, you know, for us here at Alaska's News Source, branching out and doing things that are, you know, more in the digital realm, um, people find out about things and it's on Facebook or it's on social media before we can even get it out to the public. So really going into that world of digital has been big. Uh, podcasts were one of them. They've started a few. And so again, kind of going back to with my advocacy in my story with you know postpartum and moms and mental health and things like that and being a parent myself they were like well why don't we do a, like a parenting podcast so we kind of brainstormed about it came up with the name of what would kind of fit for um, parenting in the far north and when you th talk about being a parent there's tons of stuff that can fall under that umbrella so we put it out there got a logo going and I think we have about seven episodes that are up but have met some incredible a guest that have come on to talk about everything from a stay-at-home dad to um, postpartum support to a mom who all three of her kids have severe food allergies and how she has to navigate that so it's really a chance for people to come and speak longer than just sound bites we get to chat with them for 30 minutes and find out you know how parenting in the far north is and it's been pretty cool so i'm excited about it what advice do you have for young girls who want to start pursuing something they're interested in, but not sure how to take the first step? I would say find a mentor, find whatever it is that you want to do, somebody that's doing that, reach out to them. There's social media nowadays, email them or call them up and just be bold and say, hey, I am really interested in what you do. Would you mind being a mentor? Because nine out of 10 times that person would love to share you know, their expertise. Um, so like what you're doing now is doing this podcast. We're usually the ones being you know, interviewing people. So the fact that you're getting this experience to interview me, this might you know, spark something in you. So I would definitely say find mentors, do your research and follow your passion because I truly love what I do. It doesn't feel like work. I mean, yes, it's a, you know, it's a grind at some times, but for the most part, um, I've enjoyed it and I've been doing it 16 plus years. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being with us today. Do you have any lasting words you'd like to tell young viewers? Um, I would just say follow your passion. That's kind of my thing. I majored in mass comm. I didn't know a lot of times that I would actually stick with it, but I did and I'm grateful that I did. So, and I had a lot of good mentors for myself along the way, um, but also take time for yourself. That's important no matter what career uh, or what you're doing. So follow your passion, take care of you and you know, everything else 
usually should just fall into play. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks Thank for having me. Thank you everyone me. for listening today. <laughs> this is a part of ASD Shine Bright podcast and we'll see you soon. <laughs>